Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Courtney and my husband Riley and I are building our dream off-grid property in North Idaho. We started almost exactly a year ago with 20 acres of raw land and we're finally at this point. We've got our 30 by 40 barn dominium with our upstairs apartment and we've had so much fun bringing you guys along on this project. That being said, our work is not even nearly done and we are tackling our biggest project to date. The most asked question that we received about our property when we purchased it was how the heck are we going to get here year round? And it has been a struggle. Over the winter, we built snow tracks and we were able to get in and out that way, but the long-term goal is to be able to drive here in all seasons. Our road is steep, our road is long, and it has never been properly built. So we have our work cut out for us. We've already tackled one big road project this spring, but that was probably only about 10% of the total road that we need to build and it was hard on our equipment. We have a Kubota KX057 excavator and our army dump truck. And while those machines are extremely versatile and great for a lot of projects around here, they're just not able to move the amount of dirt that we need to move in a timely manner. We've been shopping for a skid steer or a front loader tractor for a long time now to help us do some of this road work and spread the gravel. But with the way the equipment market is right now, we frankly couldn't afford one. We also did consider buying new and financing it, but we can't even find one to buy on the lots. <laughs> A lot of you guys had made really great recommendations on equipment that you thought would be good for the job. And one that kept coming up time and time again was a bulldozer. And that was incredibly intimidating to us because we know nothing about bulldozers. But in that same week, our neighbor came over to check on our progress on the road. And he actually offered that if we could get his bulldozer running, we could use it to work on the road. That sparked an idea for us. So we went over and we spent three days trying to get it running. It hadn't run in 20 years. We took a friend who knows a lot about dozers and we left pretty stumped and frustrated. We weren't able to get it running, but that kind of got the ball rolling on, we need a bulldozer. So I hit Craigslist, my favorite place to shop for cool stuff. And I was pretty discouraged. Small dozers, it turns out, are really expensive and in high demand right now. I reached out to my friend Dave and I asked him, hey Dave, how big is too big? And he pretty much responded with, well, how much dirt do you want to move? <laughs> Next thing I knew, I found this D8. It weighed 81,000 pounds. I sent it to Courtney and she just kind of laughed at me. I legitimately thought Riley was kidding when he first showed me the dozer. It took a few days for me to warm up to the idea, but the more we talked about it, the more it made sense. There were a lot of plus sides to this dozer. It was close to us. It had an electric pony start motor and it was big enough that we could probably build our entire road in one summer. So we went to check it out and that's where the entertainment begins. I have never experienced checking something out on Craigslist quite like this before. Dave is driving the dozer. Riley is learning how to drive it. We don't even know where the guy went that's selling it. He just said, take it. That is really big, really, really big. That's a big machine. The first time I got behind the controls of that thing, I was terrified. They were so counterintuitive to me. It's got a decelerator pedal, so every time I panic and take my foot off the pedal, it would just start going faster. And I started thinking like, I'm way in over my head with this thing. Luckily our friend Dozer Dave came to look at it with me because without him, I think I would have just walked away at that point. One of the things I really liked about the dozer is that it was currently being used on a job site. So I knew that it ran, I knew the hydraulics worked, and I knew that it would start. Another big plus was the big U-shaped bucket on the front. That's gonna allow us to shuttle dirt long distances so that we can do big cut and fills and help eliminate some of the highs and lows on our road. Another big difference between this dozer and the D7 that our neighbor had is the four-way angle blade. So on the front, we can actually tip the blade one way or the other to cut a grade. The D7 that my neighbor has is just a straight up and down. One thing that I liked about this dozer more than our neighbor's dozer was that it ran. I knew that that meant that we would spend less time hopefully working on it this summer and more time putting it to work. So Dave and I spent the better part of an hour crawling all over that thing and looking at it from top to bottom. And even though it's an old tired dozer that has a lot of hours on it, everything on the undercarriage seems to be in pretty good working order. So we piled back in the truck and we headed home laughing because I didn't really know if this was real or not. We had to make the decision really quickly because there were other people that wanted this dozer. And so after about 10 minutes of talking back and forth, we looked at Dave and we said, would you buy this? And he kind of shrugged and said, yeah. So Dave, you're the reason we bought the dozer. Buying it wasn't as simple as just buying it. We had to get it to our property. The blade on it is 13 foot six wide and it weighs 80,000 pounds. So Riley called our friend Josh with the Central Mountain Homesteading and he gave us the number of a hauler who he thought was gonna be able to help us get it moved. To our surprise, not only was he willing to do it, but he had an availability in three days. So we started scrambling to get everything in place to move this thing. 
the day before delivery day, the owner of the dozer actually invited me out to go spend a few hours on the dozer and get familiar with it. That way when we got it to our place, I'd have a little better idea how to operate it. And I'm so thankful for that time because in those couple of hours, I actually like learned how all the controls worked. I learned how to start it and I was actually feeling confident for delivery day. I was home editing while Riley was learning to drive the dozer. I got a text message from an unknown phone number that just said, that's your husband. And I went, oh my gosh, what does that mean? And I, and finally a video came through and it's just a video of Riley driving the dozer down this steep hill. The owner of the dozer told me that he wasn't going to let me buy the dozer unless I could prove to him that I could drive it up this steep hill, park it at the top, turn it around and drive it back down. I was absolutely terrified but it was so much fun. Before we knew it, it was delivery day. It's dozer day. What day is it? It's dozer day. This thing is ginormous. I don't even think there are words to explain how big it is. But this bucket is <laughs> so big. Holy cow. Are we crazy? <laughs> We're definitely crazy. We are waiting for the truck to show up and then the seller is going to load it for us, I think. <laughs> and then it'll be up to us to get it unloaded and up to the house. I am so excited though. He's getting it fired up. It sounds like the pony motor was out of fuel. Oh, oh here it goes again. Here it goes. It was really sinking in that we were buying this thing. We got it fired up, got it warming up, moved it out to the front of the property or the truck was going to load it and, uh, and waited for the truck. Our buddy Josh wasn't kidding when he said that the truck driver moved quick. He pulled up, he was unhitched within seconds, and luckily the seller agreed to load it onto the trailer for us, so that took some of the stress off, and before we knew it, our bulldozer was barely on this massive trailer. I mean, the way that it hung off, it made the trailer look so small. That's where the excitement kind of began. The driver, Justin, needed Riley and I to be the pilot cars in front of him and behind him because we were an oversized load. We've never done anything like that before, and so we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into. Dave made the good call to leave the dozer running on the trailer. We were worried that the float in the carburetor might stick and flood the pony motor, and the last thing we wanted to do was pay a trucker by the hour while we tried to start a dozer that wouldn't start on the trailer. Leaving it running meant that when we got it here to the property, all we had to do was back it off and the trucker could leave. Dave and I were riding in the, in the front pilot car, and we were just chatting back and forth, so excited about the future plans for getting this dozer to the property that, honestly, we weren't paying that much attention. When I glanced in the mirror, there was no truck. There was just a train. Oh my gosh, a train. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my gosh, there's a train coming. What is the odds of the timing of that? That could have been so bad. What if he had been in the thing when the thing came down? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh. Take two. This episode is brought to you by Monk Pack. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I have a mad sweet tooth. But I also know that too much sugar makes me a little jittery. Monk Pack offers low sugar, keto friendly bars that are even gluten free. Monk Pack keto granola bars and nut and seed bars contain one gram of sugar or less, two to three grams of net carbs, and each bar contains 150 or less calories. Monk Pack bars have an amazing chewy texture and come in delicious flavors like sea salt dark chocolate, coconut cocoa chip, and caramel sea salt. My favorite flavor is the peanut butter dark chocolate. 
They're perfect as a quick breakfast, a midday excavator snack, or as a guilt-free decadent dessert. Get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting monkpack.com and entering the code AMBITIONSTRIKES at checkout. Or simply click on the link below to save 20% off your first order today. So thanks again to Monk Pack for sponsoring this video and keeping us fueled all day long. After a few miles of side roads, we made it to our road, which meant that it was time to unload the dozer. We were both relieved when Dozer Dave offered to unload it for us because it just meant there was probably one less thing to go wrong. So Dave got it off the trailer and before we knew it, we were headed to our property. It was very reminiscent of when we took delivery of our excavator and we started a very slow drive up to our home. Unlike the excavator, we did have an additional concern, which is that we didn't even know if the dozer was going to fit on our road. It got pretty close in a few spots, but luckily the dozer was able to fit on most of our existing road without having to do any demolition. I was a little bummed about that. I was looking forward to starting the road deconstruction right then and there on day zero. We got the dozer up to the property, we parked it, we turned it off, and that's when it really hit us. <sighs> we made it. Sort of had that feeling of, well, now what? Everything we've been doing has been working on getting this machine to here. Now that it's here, what do we do next? Oh my gosh, <laughs> even I'm 6'2 and I need a step stool. Wait, this seat's not as big as the other I know, one. It doesn't seat two. Where are you gonna ride? <laughs> Woo! Right over here. I feel like a boss. <laughs> I, can you even see over the thing? Well, I mean, <laughs> I can see 100 feet ahead of me. Transmission, <laughs> and then these are each the brake. <laughs> and that's the decelerator pedal. So when you push that, it actually makes the engine go slower. Oh my gosh. So when you panic and take your foot off the gas, it actually goes faster. Well, I don't panic, so that's okay. Well, where do you want to start? No, I'm not driving it right now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. I'm... That's good, because I don't remember how to start it. <laughs> the you hit the brake. brake. I can see the lake from up here. You should have seen the look on our neighbor's face when I told her we bought this. <laughs> it's like a, did you ever when you were a kid go to like the quarry and there was the, you could like play on the big equipment? This dozer came from a quarry. I know, I, f I feel like we like stole something that we shouldn't own. Yeah. I truly thought that this is where this episode was going to end and I went to town to run errands and then this happened. <laughs> well guys, I thought the video was gonna end there. I ran to town to run some errands with the rest of our day, and we have a security camera at our property that's motion sensed, and I just got a push notification for a vehicle that is at the property. <laughs> and it's the doser. <laughs> oh my gosh, what are those boys up to?
We have some big plans for this dozer. Not only is it gonna allow us to rebuild our entire road, but we also have something even bigger than this that we plan to move to our property this summer, and this is gonna make it possible. This dozer is huge, so it isn't really able to do all of the projects we wanna do. So we're hoping to get the big ones crossed off the list, get our work done, and then sell this thing, hopefully for what we paid for it. And then we'll be back to shopping for something a little smaller and more practical for using around the property. It still kind of feels surreal that we own this thing. We've had it a few days now. We haven't fired it up because the weather has been relentless. It just will not stop raining. And we know from experience up here that if we start tearing things up when it's raining, it turns into an absolute snot mess. We have quite a few other projects lined up that we'd like to get done first. Dozer's gonna have to wait, but I can't wait to start using it. Our next project is one that we, and I think you guys have really been looking forward to, which is our permanent residential solar array. We're gonna be doing things a little out of the box, and I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun following this one. So make sure to stay tuned for the next few episodes. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks guys.